Good morning my dear brothers and sisters wherever you are and welcome to Carmel Light to the day's reflection but before we do that let us invoke the presence of the trinity in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen today we are celebrating the feast of corpus christi the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of christ and for our reflection we have the gospel text from john chapter 6 51 to 58 a reading from the holy gospel according to john jesus said to the jewish crowds i am the living bread that came down from heaven whoever eats this bread will live forever and the bread that i will give is my flesh for the life of the world The Jews quarreled among themselves saying How can this man give us his flesh to eat Jesus said to them Amen amen I say to you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you do not have life within you Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him on the last day For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and i in him just as the living father sent me and i have life because of the father so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me this is the bread that came down from heaven unlike your ancestors who ate and still died Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, on the feast of Corpus Christi, a priest was preaching a very long homily. And a girl was sitting right on the first bench with her mother was restless and at the same time hungry too she was not sure when the preaching and the mass would end so hesitatingly she whispered in her mother's ears mom are we allowed to go home when the red light that we see in front of us turns green mom smiled and replied darling this red light will never turn green because it symbolizes the presence of our lord in the tabernacle the feast of corpus christi also known as the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of christ is a feast to where we acknowledge and celebrate the real presence of the body and blood soul and divinity of jesus christ in the eucharist this feast originated in 1246 when robert de torothe bishop of the belgian diocese of lille ordered the festival to be celebrated in his diocese now he was persuaded actually to initiate the feast by saint juliana prioress of mount cornelion near lee who actually had a experienced a vision this feast did not spread until 1261 when jacques pantaleon formerly archdeacon of lee became pope urban the 4 In 1264 Pope Urban IV ordered the whole church to observe the feast St Thomas Aquinas at the request of Pope Urban IV composed the official prayers of the church for this feast and also the famous eucharistic hymn Tantum ergo sacramentum Pope Urban's order was later confirmed by Pope Clement V 
and by the mid 14th century this festival was generally accepted and in the 15th century it became in effect one of the principal feasts of the church today we celebrate corpus christi a day set aside by the church since the 13th century to give thanks for the sacrament of the eucharist What is so remarkable about this celebration is that we are not just thanking Jesus for the memory of something that happened at the last supper where he instituted the sacrament of the eucharist but we are giving thanks for something that we are experiencing every time when we come together and celebrate this eucharist it's here that we both in word and sacrament bring alive the story of Jesus passion death and resurrection through which he has won eternal life for us the second vatican council made it very clear that the eucharist is the source summit and summary of our faith In receiving the Eucharist a Christian is united to Christ and to the other members of the Christian community and that is why this sacrament is rightfully called holy communion It's Saint Thomas Aquinas who passionately loved the Eucharist acknowledged that in all sacraments we receive grace but he often asserted that eucharist is the crown of sacraments because in eucharist we not only receive grace but we receive the author of grace jesus christ himself saint agustin another giant theologian said no one eats this flesh unless he first adores it here we are reminded and encouraged to worship jesus when the priest during the consecration lifts up the bread and repeats jesus word this is my body and then holds it high before we can worthily receive him we are reminded to adore him furthermore during the eucharistic celebration we offer our sacrifice to god and in return during communion we receive his sacrifice the communion we receive gives us immunity against sin as material food gives us health and immunity against bacteria and viruses that attack us likewise partaking in the holy eucharist gives our spirit immunity and strength to battle against the little viruses called sins holy communion received worthily and with preparation results in health and strength for our bodies and souls as food develops the body and keeps it healthy so too our spiritual food the holy body and blood of christ strengthens our soul so that it may grow continually in grace hence we need to be aware that after communion you and i are living tabernacles because the physical presence of jesus continues in us for a brief time that's why we have the communion hymn a time of silence the communion prayer and even the announcements to build up the body of christ in practical ways I encourage you to use well the time of the communion to say thanks to express your gratitude for the magnanimous gift of the person of Jesus Christ himself Pope Emeritus Benedict the 16 aptly wrote in his encyclical Deus Caritas Est a eucharist which does not pass over into the concrete practice of love is intrinsically fragmented and finally when we move out of the church 
we take Christ with us to give him also to the world by what we are and what we become after receiving Jesus in our hearts. We even take Christ to the sick and the dying so that they may be nourished in their struggles and illness and may be strengthened in their journey of faith. Brothers and sisters, throughout the history of the church, God has time and again made known to us through different people the importance of the Eucharist and the power and life it provides for our spiritual growth. There are many saints who have nourished and sustained themselves only through the Eucharist. Here are a couple of them. For example, St. Catherine of Siena often for months lived solely on the Holy Eucharist. St. Nicholas of Lue, Switzerland's great native saint, spent the 19 years of his life as a hermit. For those 19 years, he was unable to eat any food. The Holy Eucharist was his only nourishment. And finally, Blessed Alexandrina Maria de Costa, a Portuguese peasant girl, paralyzed at a very young age, spent her life offering her sufferings and prayers to God for the conversion of sinners. For the last 13 years of her life, she ate and drank nothing except her daily Holy Communion. Now, I have listed these not with an intention that you should try this out. Rather, I just want to remind ourselves the immense power of the Eucharist through the real presence of Jesus and how it nourishes and sustains our lives. The Eucharistic celebration on this day is a sign of our total participation and oneness in the sacrifice of Jesus. We always went back home nourished and strengthened by the Lord. It was a powerful witness to the Lord's everlasting presence among us. But today, we are facing a very special and unusual situation where in many countries, still the celebration of the Eucharist and public worship are prohibited. Again, in countries where this rule is relaxed with certain conditions, yet children below 12 and faithful above 65 years are not allowed to participate in the Eucharistic celebration. Now, this does not mean that the Eucharist has lost its power and strength. This does not mean that the Lord is no more present with us today because lockdown of the Word of God and the Eucharistic Lord cannot be thought of. It's up to us, my dear friends, especially in these hard times, to be witnesses of the risen Lord and to His presence amidst us. Today, as we celebrate this, this solemn feast of the holy body and blood of our Lord, some might celebrate it in the church, some at home through live streaming. In any case, we are all called to give witness to the presence of the Lord amidst us. The Eucharist has a transformative effect. It has the power to change us, not in a small way, but in a very special way to recreate us into a new and better person. When we receive the Eucharist, not only does Jesus visit us, he remolds us into a person more and more like himself. St. Augustine said, Believe what you see. See what you believe and become what you receive, the body of Christ. And when we say Amen, we are saying, Yes, Lord, I believe this is the body and blood of Christ and I will be the body of Christ to others. And let us conclude our reflection with a short prayer. Lord, you are my everything. Lord, you are my strength. In this bread you promise me life 
that has no end. Amen. Thank you, dear friends, for your time and for this patient listening. I wish you all at the very outset a very happy feast of Corpus Christi. May the body and blood that we receive transform us more like Jesus. Wish you a happy feast. Stay blessed. See you next week, next Sunday. Till then, bye-bye. Brothers and sisters, wish you all a happy feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We thank Reverend Father Ratan Almeida for sharing his reflections on the Word of God today. It's also marked as World Blood Donor Day. Let's be generous in donating blood whenever it is required. Today, we remember all those who are celebrating their birthday. We wish you all a happy birthday and pray God's choices blessings on you. Especially, Avinash Borge from Mumbai, Godwin D'Souza from Bajpay, Anna Rosa Rodriguez from Goa, Mural Kutino from Patorda, Goa. Rickson Anil Lobo from Adyar Padau. Dion Lenville Pereira from Bengaluru. Vincent D'Souza from Abu Dhabi. Edna Lavita D'Souza from Parappu Nakre. Pramila Krasta from Nainadu. Once again, happy birthday. God bless you. We also pray for the departed soul of Jacob Paul Krasto from Kundapur. May the Lord grant him eternal rest. Have a great Sunday, my dear friends. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.